Hey guys, I'm here with Thomas Hennessy. Thomas, how you doing? I am wonderful. I think you are officially the newest employee of CIG. I guess technically maybe that is true. When Although, was your official start date? 30th of March. Monday the 30th of March. When did you start working here? About a year ago. <laughs> so. Under a contract basis. Yes, well I, I started out obviously on the next great starship so that wasn't an everyday yeah. full-time thing that was you know every couple of weeks I would come in and help out and we would film those episodes mm -hmm. and then I actually came in and helped the pilot of Around the Verse and helped film Hollywood Ben and all those funny little Man. bits and I had no idea what was going on it was the weirdest show that in the world. That first episode is so rough. <laughs> I like, we, we just watched it maybe what the day yesterday the day before yeah. it was like oh they were hosting from their desk it was it was a great show. It was a great show. No, it was great. And, 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 and it was just little by little, you know. And then, I, and then I went and did a movie. Yeah. Came back from that. All right, fine. Talk about your movie. Well, I did, wasn't trying to. Yeah, I was trying right. to go, just go ahead. Talk about your movie. Well, I did a movie. It, so I did a movie, as you know. As you guys, I'll tell you guys then. He knows this already. Yeah. Uh, I directed, wrote yeah. and directed a movie called Another Time, starring Justin Hartley and James Kyson. Justin Hartley was Green Arrow in Smallville, I think. is probably the yeah. most famous Thing he's known for a bunch of like people like that TV actors and stuff so I did that in the summer and then you guys asked me to come back you need some more help around the verse was starting to pick up mm -hmm. and so I just started coming back every week and coming back every week and found myself here more and more and then found myself doing more and more and traveling more and more and yeah. now here I am so they sent sitting you, with you yeah they sent you to PAX East to film all that PAX South PAX East, East South by Southwest all sorts of cool stuff coming up so it con. was a fun couple months. It's been a it's been a wild 2015 so far. So when you got back from filming your movie and you started working here, oh, basically full time, right. what was one of the things you like? What was one of the things you liked about ATV, and what was the things you immediately tried to change? I mean, I know because well, I helped put the show. You know, on. I don't know that I came in even like immediately like, oh, I want to change this, I want to change this because I think that coming into the situation, you got to kind of assess exactly who the audience is what the show's trying to accomplish and what we're working with it. I think the thing that took me by the most surprise or that I was most unprepared is just the quick turnaround. It's, oh, yeah. it's, it's so fast. It's so many things where it's film it, film it, edit it, and, and, and put it out. And so that was something that took a little bit to kind of get used to, especially coming from a, a much more controlled, elaborate, you know, filmmaking background where you have 20 people or 40 people or, or, or something on set and here it's one or two guys, you know, doing this whole show and running multiple cameras mm -hmm. that you can't even see. You like line it up, hope it's good, and go to the you know <laughs> next thing and see. Like even right now, as we sit here, there are three cameras and we can't see any. We of can't them. really see what's going in. We have one person looking into one of them, and <laughs> the rest of them, you know, sometimes so that's why sometimes you you see stuff and it's like, oh, the framing was off on that, or why did they do that? And sometimes that's why it's we just you know we have to go with it and, and we want to put out content real time. You know, because it gets, you know, we want to give the most up-to-date stuff. So we exactly. turn it around fast and we don't, you know, we don't sit on stuff. And so, the nature so of the game so requires us to put out things as fast as we get them almost. The number one thing, though, I did want to change back to your original question is, is you're looking at right here, is we were filming against bare walls. Mm -hmm. And I was like, you know, I, I get it that this is a really, really tight space for those of you who, who aren't seeing the interview. <laughs> we, we do interviews in here all the time. This is like a... 12 by 12 room, possibly, <laughs> with two editing bays in it, a bookshelf with a, a couple of servers, or, or not servers, but uh, raid drives with all our archive footage, C-stands, equipment, everything, and this is all takes place in this room, so there's just a little itty-bitty corner cut out for us to do these interviews, Yeah. and so it was like, how can we make this more visually interesting? I get yeah. it, we can't get a, you know the depth of field like I get when we film 10 for the chairman in Chris's office, and I can kind of get that nice out of focus background and bring Chris to the front, but at least we can break it up a little bit. So the big thing was was putting up these posters. That was the, probably the first thing I did. So. so you never worked in the video game industry before this, correct? That is correct. What's the big, what's the major difference between film and something you're more accustomed to, like television well, and video games? You know what, I, I think they're actually very similar in a way. I mean, I think that a lot of people, this feels a lot like working in the post-production side of filmmaking. Mm -hmm. So uh, is what it is. It's a lot of artists and, and com uh, compositors and, and things like that do it. So I think it's, it's really similar to that. For those of you that, okay, there's, there's currently a raid going on right now. Okay, something's crazy just happened. Five people just ran in and started shooting Ben. Nope, nope, we're filming. 
<laughs> we will, we will uh, uh, not cut this out. The community team has been attacked and they will be avenged <laughs> when we're done with this interview. <laughs> you know, I think it's quite similar actually, in a way. It, it feels very much like working like in post-production side of filmmaking. We, you know, we have a lot of compositors and artists and modelers and a lot of that stuff happens if you do something that has a lot of special effects work. It's, it's in, the, in this difference, it's, you know, it's going into a game instead of a film, but it, at, the, at the end of the day, we are creating picture and sound for people to consume as entertainment. Uh, video game is a little more interactive, I think, you know, uh, yeah. inter entertainment experience, but it's still picture and sound and, and, and so on and so forth. We're still dealing with a fan base who has very high expectations for, yeah. for what we're, and very, very passionate fan base, which is, is true with, I think, in some, in some TV shows and things like that as well. So I think it, there's a lot of similarities. There's a lot of differences as far as the, the this is a much more long form piece. Yeah. You know, as we're, 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 we've got, you know, but we've got many goals along the way. So, you know, it definitely took some getting used to this, like I think the specifics of how we create community content. But I think as I've learned, you know, it was intimidating at first because I was like, oh, I don't know anything about video games. Yeah. But as I've gotten more comfortable and, and kind of learned what all the pieces are and who, what everybody does, it's, it, it, a lot of things are very similar. Obviously, there's some still things I, I, I'm trying to learn and wrap my head around with some of the programming and the, and the coding and stuff like that, which mm -hmm. you know, is hard to wrap my head around. But for the most part, big picture stuff, I think, makes sense, sense to me. Yeah, I was really impressed because like, you, in terms of even not in the industry, you just weren't a really big gamer. You don't really play video games. So right. the fact that you've been able to pick it up as well as you have has been impressive. Right, yeah. I mean, my video game, I joke. I mean, I probably play more video games than I joke about you know i joke like yeah. words with friends that's that's my game right there <laughs> yeah. words with friends i got solitaire on my phone you know i grew up with the sega genesis stuff so that like the nhl 94 which you know still an that, awesome game you know and then the n64 stuff the mario kart shadows of the empire loved that game you know that stuff but i don't know i think it's just i got a little older and, and started getting into more things it's just you find you have less time yeah to you have less places to spend your time. You and, have less so, time, but more options. Right, maybe. and so it, it's one of those things where, not necessarily because I didn't like games, but it was, I just didn't have time, yeah. you know, and, and then I didn't have money, you know, so I then, you know, I was in the military, you know, I did all that, that's when I think I was playing games, I had, you know, money to buy the latest console or whatever, mm -hmm. PC, Mac, whatever it is. Um, people are going to be like, Mac, you know, he plays <laughs> yeah. games on a well, Mac. Well, he's, he's a Mac guy, yeah, so let's yeah, just, move, let's know, just move on. Let's just move on from that. You know, and then I got out, you know, and I was kind of doing different things and I was working, you know, in film and television or I was doing some acting and goofy stuff like that. And then decided I wanted to go back to college and I wanted to, you know, get a degree and do all this stuff. So I'm kind of like the broke college student putting myself through college. And, you know, so I didn't have the money for the PlayStation 3 or PlayStation 4. Actually, you yeah. know, it was just one of those things where like, all right, well, you know, I want to make a film or I want to do this or I need, a, you know, I want to buy a camera. Or I want to do and my disposable income went somewhere else. So I kind of got out of it. But then being here especially with this game, yeah. you know, it really makes you like, you know, this is something I want to buy into. This is something I want to kind of play. This is something I would actually even consider buying and building a PC to play. Oh, wow. Line. Yeah, I mean, that's how cool, <laughs> you know, this game is and, and how cool it is to work here. Is that just your PR hat? Do you really mean that? No, I absolutely 100% <laughs> mean that. No, it, this, is, this is cool. All right, man, so we're going to let you out of here. Before we go, let's do some rapid fire. We already kind of got these answers during the other Meet maybe, the Devs. Maybe they've changed. Yeah. My, maybe maybe as, an, as a official employee, <laughs> my tastes have changed. Favorite video game? Shadows of the Empire. Favorite video game that James has seen? NHL 94. Okay. Words Favorite. with Friends? Favorite movie James has seen? Chasing Amy. Okay, good. Uh, that's about it. Okay. <laughs> you know I, what? It's really hard to find movies that James has seen because James has not seen anything made post probably 1991. So. <laughs> yeah, that sounds about right. You know, but we, we let you. <laughs> we, we still love you. All right, buddy. Thanks for joining me. Thank you. I'm James Pugh. Tom Tennessee. And you just m met him. Wow, you butchered that. <laughs> Try that again. No, I want to stay with that one. Well, hey, it's on him, not me.